Hello everyone, I am Marcello Barberi. I just won YCS London last weekend uh, and I'm here to make a report about my experience. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of sick, so sorry if you can understand what I'm saying, but uh, I mean, that was just the drawback of winning uh, a 1200 people event, so it was worth it. Um, thanks, first of all, I want to thank uh, my team, Complexity Car Gaming. Uh, I really am having a great time with them. Uh, really, I really love being part of this team, and so I want to thank also our sponsors, TCG Market, AdGens, and the newest one, um, The Brotherhood, from London itself, so that was great. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on my uh, deck choices, because uh, you can find my deck profile on the uh, Lithium YouTube channel, uh, so go check it out and subscribe to Lithium channel itself, if you want. Um, but well, uh, I decided to play Shadows, it was just the best deck going to this event uh, and I decided to play the Artifact version uh, because I feel like um, it was already a really really solid version but uh, after the ban list uh, the other version like the Open Chaos version was not really valid because you would clog too much with uh, really huge monster ends uh, and there wasn't really nothing else I wanted to play and at the same time uh, I didn't think that uh, a version like Seabi one in the US playing five artifacts, so big attack also, and in missions was a solid choice for YCS London because differently from USA, uh, European players correctly play breakthrough skill. So that deck is slowed down so much by the card and I just didn't want to, to get steamrolled by breakthrough skills from my opponent. Um, at the same time, I just thought the uh, moral attack was, of course, really bad in my hands. But, I mean, drawing two is the problem. If you draw one moral attack, it's going to be fine. I mean, you really want a line monster in your end to go into contract. So, uh, it was really fine for me. I never had problems with it. And I tried to minimize the dead draws, uh, as, as I said, by only playing uh, one copies of Artifact Squamata. I didn't... I never need two copies of this card during the entire tournament. I never wished I played two cards. Um, and I really am happy with my choice of playing one of this card. But of course, as I said in the profile, I could do this choice because I decided to main in my deck the MVP of the most lineup, which was Felis. This card literally won me eight, if not more, of my games in the top card. I completely abused of this card in the top card, and you can even see an example of this in the last game of the finals, where I could use it to destroy my set, uh, opponent monster set, and just swing for instant damage. This card was absolutely amazing, and uh, uh, it let me uh, play one Squamata because in the situation in which I draw uh, both Squamata and Mathematician, I still have to lose as the possible different option with a uh, mathematician. So that worked amazing for me. Um, so for the other monsters, there's really nothing to say, I think. Uh, the monster lineup was really standard. Uh, same for spells and traps. Um, so uh, for traps, I just want to talk about uh, Shadoko. Uh, not many people are playing this card at the moment. I think that was really a mistake for the YCS London because uh, Shadow's decks, uh, like, I think it's pointless to play more Shadow monsters which will clog your end while you can just play this card which is infinite uh, fusion materials and at the same time it is just a really really valid option against the Burning Abyss matchup of course because it lets you instantly get back the fusion and so you don't risk Homakata and Wimlust. But at the same time, I mean, it's not really gonna clog your end. Like, I don't really see it. This card was MVP for me all weekend. You can see in the future matches, I, I really abused of this car. As soon as I could get my hands on this car, I, I, I would do it. Like, it was really amazing for me. And um, the last thing I need to explain was probably um, um, the uh, Trap 8. So basically, I decided to play uh, one copy of Trap Stone and one copy of Wire Trap because um, walking to the event, many people were, were saying that Wire Trap is better in the artifact version because you can stop breakthrough skill and send it back into the deck. And 
the situation in which they are actually different in game day are really few. So I actually sit down and wrote down a list of pro and cons, and it's actually true in theory that they don't have much huge difference, but I don't really think that's the case. I think uh, Trap Stun is overall better because the situation in which the biggest difference happens, which is uh, face up Vanity Emptiness with uh, maybe even some good monsters on field, happens quite a lot because that's the only soft lock uh, any current uh, top deck is, uh, is able to do. So they are all going to try to make that and uh, Trap Stun really shines in that situation but at the same time I really wanted to have Wire Trap because Wire Trap really deals with any situation. It deals with uh, Alpha in the Stellar matchup, it deals with Breakthrough Skill as I said and any really random situation, stop any chains without any possibility from your opponent to respond further and um, it actually stopped Trap Stun itself. So that was really huge for me and I just cited as you saw the second and third Trap Stun so that was really a good ratio for me. And um, the last card in my deck was Burst Rebirth. Uh, I had, uh, as I said in the profile, 39 cards in my deck uh, and I was happy with them. Um, I was actually thinking about playing Upsa Goblin because I'm an actual Upsa Goblin person but I couldn't do it because um, this deck is not like uh, Mermils where you could play Upsa Goblin because the only dead car was uh, Genix Controller here you have so many dead cars like you have uh, Moral Attack, Beast, uh, Shadow Beast, um, Phillies like so many dead cars and so Upsa Goblin was not correct in this deck also because you don't wanna, like, you're gonna grind against all the top decks and it's gonna make it harder to give your opponent extra life points actually. Uh, so I I was gonna just play an extra card to fuel the engine, so a card that let me special summon from Grave. And as I said, it was gonna be either Soul Charge, Call of the Hunted or this card itself. But in the end, I decided to play this card because both Call of the Hunted and Soul Charge are powerful, for, of course, but they require you to have an opening. So you need almost Shadow Fusion in most cases to make it good. While in all the situation in which Call of the Hunter and Soul Charge are gonna be uh, live, this card is also gonna be live, but this card is amazing, or even if I just open with Foolish Burial, Shadow Games or Mathematician. So this card was really good for me and I just side it out all the time for other cards. So it was really good. Um, I don't really have anything else to say about the deck. Uh, as I said, go check it out. So I'm just gonna um, talk about my experience itself. Um, so going twice is London. Um, I'm just gonna uh, make a report. So in the first round, uh, I actually uh, played against uh, uh, Burning Abyss. Uh, give me a second. Uh, yeah, against Brett, uh, a guy from England. Self, uh, I I don't remember much, but it was kind of. Uh, quick match, I remember I threw him. Uh, then in the second uh, match I played against Lewis, it was a mirror match uh, and I also beat it Chuo. Uh, in the third game I played against uh, Michael from UK again. Uh, he was playing Burning Abyss and uh, he was really a chill guy, he recognized me from European events and uh, really had a really huge game one in which I completely uh, get rid of all the burning of his monsters, but he ended up be beating me with Tour Guide without effects, just beating me down. I had 3,000 life points and he just killed me with it, and because I didn't draw any monsters. And but then I, I just beat him game two and three, so I was 3-0. Uh, and then I, I got a future match in round four against Michael Siblick. He was playing Fire King. And I gotta say that was quite an experience uh, because uh, the last future match I got was like in 2012 and things were completely different. It was like completely different. You couldn't quite tell the difference between a regular match and a future match. Well now I gotta say, grats to the organization, like future matches are amazing to watch but I gotta say they are quite like where you're not used to them, they are quite, uh, let's say, interesting to play in. I, I was really surprised by how they work. I had to wait so much to make my first moves. And unfortunately, I gotta say, uh, I was quite 
annoyed by it because uh, Siplek, which is a friend of mine, like uh, I enjoy playing against him, and all the German Fire Kings. So I asked uh, multiple times for translations of the cards because he was playing also the level 3 uh, Fire King, the Avatar Garunix and other less known cards. And uh, the judge of the table was getting uh, quite annoyed at me for no reason. And so I got a uh, warning for slow play out of nowhere. Because apparently I cannot ask for that many translations. But that was quite weird. And then, uh, so I got game one, uh, he got game two. And I gotta say that like the judge was really putting pressure on me. When I was fighting also, he was telling me, oh, you gotta, you gotta speed, you gotta speed, you gotta speed up. Like... And everybody knows I have a really bad experience from Euros with uh, slow play. So I, I got really, um, for the first time, I, I'm usually really calm. I got a little nervous there. And so in the game three, I made a, a misplay. That cost me the game. Because I, I completely overlooked my grave. And I didn't notice that I have a breakthrough skill. So I played a, uh, around the onslaught without summoning my BLS. And I just lost the game like that. Uh, where I could just play my cards and uh, without caring about Garunix because I, I have the way to stop it from a grave. But that was fine, I mean, uh, I'm not the type that uh, tilt, so I, I know how to, f uh, like, I know how to take a loss, I know how to take my misplays, like the first thing to do is my suggestion, just go through what you did in a match, go through your mistakes, you gotta learn from them. Uh, that's what I did, and so I, I just kept going and went to the next round with my 3-1 record at this point, uh, I played the next round against uh, another uh, Shadol. No, I think I played. No, wait a second. Oh no, I played against Shabis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played. Sorry, I played against Shabis uh, from United Pro Gamer. Yeah, and uh, it was like kind of a quick match. Also, I threw him. Then uh, round five and six, I played against uh, two Italians guy. Both play Burning Abyss. I won against both quite easily. I gotta say the Burning Abyss matchup in general was really swift for me. In the entire YCS, I played against five Burning Abyss. I beat them all with quite ease. Also, as you can see in the top four, I, like Chuo, my opponent, the matchup was really fine for me, honestly. Uh, so, my record I was, at this point was uh, six uh, wins and one loss. Only to Fire Kings, and uh, in the last um, round of the day one, I had to play against this guy uh, named uh, uh, Dav something. I don't know from England. I have the name, but I don't have the surname because I'm from the pairings. Uh, it was not not a good match. I gotta say, he was playing forty six cards with uh, the Seabi deck, so it was just Shadow Artifacts with Venetians. Just 46 car, I have no idea why. <laughs> but I gotta say it was really not a good match for me, because the match started with me uh, playing uh, Foolish Burial into uh, Shadow Farco, and then setting Shadow Hedgehog and Sinister Shadow Games. And when he attacked my monsters, and I flipped Sinister Shadow Games, of course, only flipping Shadow Hedgehog, because otherwise, a replay would have occurred and I would have not been able to get my Shadow Beast next turn. He called the judge and he shocked on me, saying that I flipped both monsters. So that was kind of weird, but in the end, the judges clarified that. And they they gave us both warnings for that, for misclarification. And so we continued on, but that, that was quite weird because it, it was kind of one of those person which was really, really friendly in the beginning. It was like saying over talking a lot saying oh yeah we met last year we met blah, blah, blah. like all those kind of empty words let's say but then unfortunately game one was really long and I, and I take it and game two it was also really long uh, we got into time and then in the end I didn't play uh, I didn't feel like playing that defensively because I was in a in a good position but in the end it just uh, overcome my 5,400 difference in the last turn of uh, end of the round and so we had the draw so that was quite unfortunate I would have liked to have a game free anyway and just because draws for me are, are like 
completely useless in YCS is like you're not gonna do anything out of them uh, so I ended up uh, day one on six uh, wins one loss one draw I was 42nd in the provisional standings uh, it was quite okay I mean I was kind of disappointed with that but it was kind of an okay result so I didn't lose to anything basically so it was fine uh, apart from myself like uh, day two 